going to talk about the male reproductive system first. So we have something called spermatogenesis. One of the first thing I want to say, people have this notion, and listen, this is a big girl, big boy class today because we're going to talk about um, the private part. We're all nurses. If you feel uncomfortable, please um, text me in the private text chat on this platform. Now, when a man ejaculates, you know, you see this fluid substance comes out and individuals think that all of it is actually sperm, but there is a fluid part of it and the sperm or sperms, meaning more than one, looks something like this. And they're in the fluid, which is called the semen. So you have sperms and you have the fluid part, which is called semen, all right? So the ideal temperature for the sperm's production is from one to two degrees Celsius or 33.8 to 35.6. If you notice that the testes are strategically placed outside of the body, meaning they hang from the body. And for those of you who um, will know that when the time is cold, the testes, they shriveled up and come closer to the body. When the time is hot, they hang looser away from the body, okay? The reason why that they are placed outside of the body is because too much heat will damage the sperms. So sperm's production starts at puberty and it continues for an entire lifetime in males. Sperms are produced in what we call the seminoferous tubular of the testis. So this is the testis, okay, all of this. Here is the seminal furious. This is where the sperm production starts, all right? So sperms require six to four days, which is about three months in order to be mature. Now, the testis, the testis is um, sometimes what can happen during, um, during utero, the testes are actually up into the abdominal cavity. As the fetus gets older, ready to be born, the testes actually should descend. Okay, so these are the testes. They should descend in the scrotum. The scrotum is the skin part on the outside. But sometimes what you have is something called cryotrachism, which is an undescended testing, because here's the testing and it did not descend into the scrotum. This put ones at risk for testicular cancer. So the production of testosterone and androgen is stimulated by the release of what we call luteinizing hormone. And we're gonna talk further about that when we reach endocrine, it's actually um, regulated by the pituitary gland. So spermatogenesis is stimulated by both testosterone and follicle stimulating hormones. So the left testicle normally is usually hang lower than the right. N normally that happens. So there is a kind of examination which is called the trans illumination of the scrotum. So they will do this. This kind of assessment is useful when they're evaluating a testicle that is swollen or it has mass or bleeding or if it has what we call the cryotrachidism. So what they'll do is look at them here, swollen. So they actually turn the light off in the room. Then they get a beam light or flashlight, pen light that they put up against the scrotum. Here's what you, when you can tell if it's a solid tumor, hydrocell, or a varicell. So with an hydrocell, if it, is, if it has water, which is a scrotum that is filled with water, it will transluminate like this. If it's a testicular that has cancer, so here's a normal testicle. Um, in this, see, this is what we call a hydrocell that it has water. This is one that has tumor. So if it's a tumor, the, it, it will not transhumulate. If there's something called varicocell, it is it's when the sacrum, um, the scrotum, actually feels like a bag of worms. It will not transhumulate. You will not see the light shine through it. So the light will shine through it 
only when it is um, hydrox cell, which is has water accumulation in the sacrum. So this is mostly common in infants. This is when you have cirrhosis fluid that is collected into the tunica vaginalis. And I know maybe you're thinking, vaginalis? Isn't this scrotum? Yes, it is, but it's called vaginalis. Okay. So during the scrotum examination, um, hydrocells are located um, superior and superiorly and anterior to the testis. So again, here's the testis and here's the hydrocell. So most of them are asymptomatic. Asymptomatic meaning that there's no symptoms. And it will glow when they do the transillumination. You will see the light shine through it. It's like a bulb per se. So if it's a new onset of hydrocell in an adult or in a large hydrocell, then the doctor will order ultrasound and refer to the urologist. So you as the nurse now, the patient may ask you, um, is, the, is, the, is the ultrasound painful? How do you prepare? Do they need, and as you know, ultrasound is not painful. They do not need to restrict any kind of diet. So you educate the patient based on that. You have something called testicular torsion. Now, this is a normal lying testis. So if you can see how it is slanted, this is called a bell clipper testis. The reason why this is not the normal position of a testis. And when a testis is positioned like this, they are at increased risk for what we call a testicular torsion. So when the spermatic cord, a testicular torsion, this is a spermatic cord, when it is twisted, the tested blood supply is interrupted. Because remember, here you have vascular, you have artery. When it is twisted, you find out that, that um, that's when they have a testicular torsion. And if blood supply is cut off, then that's a problem. This individual will have excruciating pain. So permanent testicular damage will result if the blood supply is not returned as soon as possible. And if it is not corrected within the first few hours, that's less than six hours, then they can have permanent damage as mentioned. So if it's not corrected within 24 hours, 100% of the testicle will become gangrenous and they have to surgically remove it. So it's more common in males, as I said, that has this bell clapper deformity. All right, and the bell clapper is the shape as uh, as in a bell, like a bell swinging from side to side. They are more at risk for what we call a testicular um, torsion. So the male who is at increased risk, a male, usually adolescent, they report maybe waking up at night in the midnight or in the morning with an abrupt onset of pain and pain, because as you can see, that is twisting around. Um, another thing that they'll see is that their scrotum is red and swollen. And this is frequently uh, accompanied by nausea and vomiting. The affected testicle is located higher and closer to the body than the unaffected side. So with testicular torsion, you will see that it is higher and makes sense because here is twisted so the, the cord gets shorter. And not only that, you will see that it is also red, as I said. There's something called the cremastica reflex that is actually missing. So majority of the cases, two thirds occur between age 10 and 20, 20 years old. So let me show you what I meant by um, the cremastica reflex. Now, this is the inner leg of the inner thigh. The testicle is elevated. That means it's pulled up, it's elevated towards the body in response to a stroking, a light stroking um, of the inner thigh. Now, it, that is a normal reflex. If that does not happen, when you as the nurse stroke your, your hand on the inner thigh, that means there is an absence of the chromatic reflex, which is a positive sign for testicular torsion. 
And again, this is an emergency. You need to call the doctor immediately. Uh, this person needs to go to the emergency room if you're working in a clinic. So there's something called torsion of the appendix testis. So at the end of the testicle, there's something called an appendix. So this appendage, if it is twisted, is a form of torsion too. So this is common in the schoolboy age, accompanied by an abrupt onset of a blue color round mass located on the testicular surface. Um, the mass resemble a blue dot. The appendix tested, this is around about 0.03 centimeter, polyp structure like, and the blue dot is caused by infraction, meaning that the blood supply is cut off. So it's more common in school age, uh, in childhood, and it's not testicular torsion. So the next thing is testicular cancer. So teenagers, uh, teenager to young adults might complain of nodules, sensation, or heaviness, or aching. So we're still talking about the testicle. Now we're talking about cancer. Um, it could be tender in one testicle. Testicular cancer can be present as a new onset of hydrolysis from tumor pressing on the vessel. Normally, it is not painful. And it can be asymptomatic, meaning that they don't feel any symptoms until it metastasizes. It's more common in white male ages 15 to 30 years old, and it's rare in African American. Here's what they tell young men to do they tell them to, when they're taking a shower, to actually feel their testicles. And they tell them to, to, to do the assessment while in the shower because. They want one the slippery um, soap. They can feel it much better. Not only that, in a warm shower, the 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 scrotum actually hang loosely, so it's much better for them to feel it, and it has less less rugae on it. So, most common tumor in male ages 15 to 30, as I said, and in more common in white males. Um, objective finding. Affected testicular feels heavier, more solid. They may palpate a hard, fixed nodule. The most common site is in the lower pole of the testis. 20% of the cases will have a comorbidity hydrocell. So just keep in mind that the hydrocell can go with, um, they will find testicular cancer sometimes when the individual have hydrocell because it's a concomitant. So the labs and treatment, the doctor will order an ultrasound um, of the testicle and it will reveal a mask. So it looks something like um, what's located in the picture up here. Um, the golden standard for diagnosis is that they'll do a testicular biopsy. So while ultrasound, it, they'll use it, but to get a definite diagnosis, it will be, um, it will be a biopsy. So this patient, the doc, depending, even if they're inpatient and in the hospital, the doctor will, um, you know, make a referral to see the urologist because they may have to remove the testis. Now, a couple of things can you can imagine a man um, removing his testis. So you have a lot of nursing diagnosis that goes with this ineffective coping. And so these are some of the things that nursing diagnosis that the person may have. Now with the technology, they can store sperms. So if he wants a father or child later on, he'll be able to. 